It's 6 p.m. You get off work, exhausted, tired. You hate your life and your boring job. You know back home only solitude awaits you. But then you remember, it's Friday and your lads are waiting for you in the pub. Ah, what a beautiful day it turned out to be. Pubs, taverns, inns, bars, cafes and other public spaces are after your home and your workplace. The uh, most important place in a town for the individual self and the community as a whole. A third place, as a sociologist would put it. A place to relax, meet friends, talk with people, known or unknown. They bring the community together as people who'd never talk with each other in any other circumstances, meet up and get to know each other, and thus becoming the center of the community. And you might even get to know the new people in town, who stay only for a visit. In case of most campaigns and novels, this is where the protagonists would come into play. It's the most classic way to start off a pen and paper campaign, for good reason. People naturally start to talk with each other when they are sitting at the same table. People exchange stories and life experiences. You learn the wildest things of the wildest people by just sitting in a pub and listening to the guy at the same table or the table over. Plus you might get some alcoholic beverages of your choice, against money, which is still always a plus. There are many different ways to add a tavern, an inn or whatever else into your setting. You can go all out on making it special, a place with many exotic secrets. Or you can go the classic route and create a good old rusty tavern with lots of beer and a good mood. Like always, the vibes of your setting and the purpose your tavern should have within your town is the most important bit. Think about the tavern's purpose first, before fleshing out everything else. What do you want to achieve? with the tavern for your plot or campaign? Is it a regular meetup for your players or protagonists or just a one-time stay? It might be of help to think about the amount of taverns and bars there are in town when thinking about its purpose. Is it the only tavern or are there many? Maybe entire streets worth of taverns? This may have some big consequences when thinking about how unique the offers are. And of course, think about the tavern size when you are at it. Reaching from small tabernas to large beer halls for hundreds of people or even more. But what do you fill the empty stomachs of your complaining people with? Talking and socializing is fine and all, but it gets even better with a bit of alcohol and good food. The purpose of your tavern is important for this one. If it's a special tavern serving exotic food, they'd offer a different stuff from your local pub, of course. Think about what food they offer, what different beverages they offer. Think about what local people would want to have. Think about a rare offer there might be, which of course are a bit more expensive. These offers make even more sense at inns where many different people come along and rest at night. Let there be some exotic offers for them, but rise their prices. What else do they offer? Are they an inn? Do people rest there at night? Can people bath or do they have to go to the river or a bathhouse? Is there any else they might offer as a service? Massages or... Hornies. Brothers are as valid to a world build as anything else. But sometimes people want to see a spectacle. Bread and games on the smaller scale. What makes your tavern more interesting? In a city with many different establishments rivaling each other, being special and standing out is more important. But even an otherwise boring town might have something interesting that brings people from all over. It could be anything, from a fight club down in the basement, over to a regular dance show, maybe some special drinking games from time to time. Or of course, the all-time beloved pub quizzes. Events are important to stir up even the regular tavern's life and make it more interesting. But who are the people who visit the pub? A pub or any public place without people is just a deserted building or deserted something. Like with any other community, a pub needs personalities. Think of your few personalities that might be a regular sight at the tavern. I'd recommend one of them to be the innkeeper, a waiter or anyone else who works in the pub your protagonists or players might attach themselves to, especially at a longer stay. Besides that, think of as many regular guests, visitors or anyone else who is part of daily pub life. The tavern we will create is in Untergrombach, the town we created in my video about towns. It is the town's only tavern, besides a small inn that offers nothing more than bed and breakfast. 
The tavern is placed in the town hall's basement. It's a beer hall with enough space to accommodate most of the entire town if needed. Entering the beer hall a stuffy warm air and the tangy smells of beer and smoky scents of lit cigars gushes out from within. The thundering laughter, the booming voices of the many conversations taking place, echoing throughout the ceiling's arches, roaring within your ears. Some people might get intimidated by the sheer overstimulation if they don't know of the magical runes enchanting you once you leave the vestibule, of course. These runes bestow you with illusions that make the air more breathable and the sounds more accommodating. One of the reasons why they are that loud to begin with is that they simply don't notice. Townsfolk go there at least once a week to socialize and meet up with people. They drink, talk and have a good time. It's the center of Untergrombach's social life and community. Being kicked out for being overly rude and misbehaving is a sign for you to change, as not being there makes you miss the entire town life. Most things of note in the town happen within the tavern. Most importantly, unofficial town council meetings, where they actually decide. And if there's a bigger festival in town, the innkeeper and the tavern staff provide the catering, with some additional help of course. The people of Unterkrombach have a very distinct taste for food and drink. Only odd cuisine for the most sophisticated of palates are eligible to even get on the menus. For real though, their ingredients are very top notch. They unwittingly have one of the best cuisines in the country. The Kroms folk living in Unterkrombach barely even butcher the meat. They hunt it. On the one hand, the many woodland animals that fall prey to the great predators, and on the other hand, the large monsters, giving the most delicate and finest of meats. The Groms folk learned how to utilize the prey to the last scale, hair or whatever else the monsters have as skin. Then there are the many herbs of the forest, extra flavorful. The milk the goats, sheep and cows give are sweet and rich, ideal to make the best cheese around. Their dishes are comparatively lackluster however. Schnitzel, Hawk, Roast, Sausages. Imagine all the classic southern German and Austrian dishes with cheese, dark bread and of course sauerkraut as garnish. Rich sauces help to flavor a special pasta they make, Spätzle. But if they ever see you putting that sauce over the Schnitzel, they look at you in disgust and murderous intent. Like I said, the meats are from feral animals, giving the dishes an extra earthy flavor. When they got some big monsters to carve the meats off, their dishes become an extra rich flavor, simply impossible to achieve with normal animals. All people feel rejuvenated after eating these dishes. The exhaustion of the day washes simply away. But uh, what is that food without some drinks? Officially, they only sell tap water, which is why you will see nothing else on the menu. Tax reasons. By asking you get quite the range of drinks offered however. There are just two different kinds of beer. A pale beer, a helles, and a dark beer, a dunkles. If you don't specify, you will get an entire tankard, a mass, about one liter of beer. You can ask for a halbe, which is the half of it. Then there are different kind of liquors, mostly fruit schnapps and bitter schnapps. All of them moonshines. They have some wines. Old red wines that are around for a few years, mostly for some lowlanders when they are coming around and ask for it. But they might have turned now. Depends on the bottle. Sometimes some fairies come around and party with them. They usually ask for juices, which is why they have some of those around too. In general, magical creatures are as welcome as anyone else as long as they behave. Besides food and beverages, they sell cigars, probably the greatest import. And there's live music playing every day by several different people who like to play. Apropos live music. What events do they have on offer? On the one hand, most local parties and events are held in the beer hall, except in the summer when they move. Every year they build a beer garden somewhere close to the ritual sites to hold their festivals there. During sacrificial rites they offer fighting tournaments for everyone who likes to compete. Big spectacles as it's mostly a brawl between the greatest of monster hunters. Getting ahead as a non-monster hunter brings an extra spice. And during regular hours there are finger pulling competitions like twice a week and there are other games on offer. You can ask for checkers or card games. Who plays those games though? Who drinks the beer? 
to flesh out a tavern the people inside are as important as everything else. Otherwise, it just feels lifeless, like your world, if you don't have people. As a DM, most NPCs will be created on the fly in taverns and other public places. If you want a more fleshed out tavern your players will spend more time in, I'll have a few examples to inspire you. First and foremost, the innkeeper, Emma. She's the mayor's sister and mother of three. She ran the tavern since she was 20 years old, which was like 30 years ago. A powerhouse who could run it all by her own if she had more than two hands. She's proud, despite her age, charismatic and basically the heart of the entire community. Like her daughter Elsa, I talked about in the town video, she doesn't share the same aversion towards lowlanders as much as the rest of the Grums folk. She'll be welcoming to everyone who doesn't do any trouble and pays their bills. Since most of her children don't live at home anymore, she turned her home into an inn with a few beds offering breakfast in the morning. Despite being a member of the town council, Emma barely ever visits because she has some quarrels with some of the other members especially in terms about the more secret sides of the town. She wants to see the hag Gundrada dead, but like anyone else who shares her opinion, she won't turn against her own town and community to remove her. And then there is Clotilde. Clotilde has been Emma's best friend for years, but they distanced themselves from each other a decade ago, when they argued about more and more politics of the town. Not only is Clotilde a town council member, but she's the head ritualist and druid in town, and one of the more conservative members of the Groms folk. She doesn't like outsiders and shows her distaste openly. You'll hear her rant a lot once she got a few beer, despite the noise drowning magic within the beer hall. Clotilde's family got saved from illness by the witch's magic, which makes her one of the loudest defenders of her within town politics, even though she'll never lose a word about the town's relationship with her in public. If you're an outsider, just better not approach her if you don't want to get scuffed at. Her temper got worse over the years. And lastly, there is Humbert. He's been a drunkard since he lost his wife. He's one of the first to enter and one of the last to leave the tavern when it's opening and closing time. Most people have given up on him. They leave him be, protect him. Some people pay his bills for the night because he doesn't have any money anyway. But they have given up talking with him because he can get very annoying very quickly. He is probably the greatest gossiper in town besides his drunkenness. Listening in on what people have to say and sharing it with whomever wants to speak with him. Even if they either don't care or it may be offensive. But the worst part is that he adds lies and twists those gossips for fun. Which was the nail in the coffin for his reputation in town. His secret is that he is spying for the hag. Listening in on the conversations and giving whatever might be interesting enough to the hag. In exchange, the hag offers him an illusion of his dead wife. His wife visits him in his dreams whenever he sleeps, so he can relive the old days with her. That's it for this video, world builders. If you got that far, tell me about your taverns in your worlds. No matter if for your book, your pen and paper campaign, or for any other reason you world build. And don't forget to like and subscribe either. <laughs> See ya.